Good morning. I'd like to welcome you as we gather in this time of worship on this 19th Sunday after Pentecost. And our service is included in your bulletin for today. We begin by invoking the name of our one true God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, we, your servants, trusting not in our own merits, pray that you will not deal with us as we deserve, but according to your mercy in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the, the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly, the concern, your, greatly that concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low. And I know how to abound. If any, in any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with a hymn, The Lord's my shepherd, I will not want. Thank you. 
A reading from Matthew chapter 22. Again, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they would not come. Again, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fat calves, and have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention, and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, Their wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. So far the text. So it was October 2nd, 1981. It was a Friday. And I happened to be in the sanctuary of my first congregation, St. John Lutheran Church in Chaska, Minnesota. I was the assistant pastor. The senior pastor was there too, along with my bride-to-be. It was our wedding rehearsal. And my bride-to-be, Sally, she had her mother and brother. I had a few relatives there as well. It was a small gathering. And the senior pastor began the ceremony by, or the rehearsal by saying, you know, I make it a tradition to ask one question before we begin this wedding for tomorrow. So he asked the question, and my wife's in that car over there, and she knows exactly what question was asked. He said in a loud voice, if there is anyone here who can show just cause why these two should not be united in holy marriage, let them now speak or forever hold their peace. And there is a voice in the back of the church by the doors, a woman's voice who shouted out loudly, I do. You know, our relatives' heads turned so quickly, I thought they were going to experience uh, whiplash. The voice was from a woman who happened to be the wife of the senior pastor. They were playing a joke. Our relatives weren't laughing. Sally and I kind of smirked. We weren't surprised by it. You know, it's amazing what happens when people have weddings. The planning can be so involved, and there's so many things that people have to be concerned about. And, and as a pastor, and I meet with couples who are planning a wedding, and, and on many occasions, I end up hearing the same frustration. So I'll ask the, the couple to be, you know, I say, uh, how, how are your plans going? And they say, it's awful. It's frustrating. What's the problem? And they'll say, you know, it's the deadline for the RSVPs, and very few people have responded. We don't know who's coming. Yeah, for those of you who have weddings coming up, <laughs> I'll keep you in prayer. You know, there are times when people don't respond. You know, they put it aside. You would think that if you've got a, a wedding invitation, and the people getting married meant something to you, you would be so excited and say, yeah, yeah, we're, we're, kind of, we're gonna be there. You know, we can't wait to be a part of it and to see this wonderful event. But sometimes people don't seem to respond with that excitement. It's like the parable that Jesus talked about in Matthew 22. The king, He's inviting people for the wedding of his son. And what do people do? They ignore the invitation. 
They have no desire to be a part of the celebration. The servants are sent out kind of like a reminder. Come on, everything's ready. Come on. They got the best food. They got the best celebration going on. And you know what? The people just don't want to go. And this is a parable about the kingdom of heaven. And it reflects the attitudes of God's covenant people when Christ came. So many of them did not embrace the presence of the Lord with joy. On the contrary, these parables that we've been hearing for the past few weeks reflect a, an attitude that is just awful, an attitude of disdain toward Jesus. They just wanted to arrest him, get rid of him. But there's another attitude going on here. It's the attitude of the Lord. You see, he wants the wedding hall filled. And those who were invited who don't want to be there, well, the Lord sends the servants out to the streets. Invite everybody. Everybody you see, just bring them in. See, that's what God wants. He wants people, a part of the celebration of the wedding of his son Jesus and his bride, the church. He wants us to be there and celebrate. Celebrate the presence of the Lord, the forgiveness and the life and the salvation that we have because of Jesus. And when those who were first invited, who were deemed unworthy, God doesn't stop with that. He reaches out to us and to others and say, come, come to the wedding feast. Celebrate Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. That's the attitude that's so beautiful. And because of that attitude, you and I are part of the feast, part of the celebration. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. The flowers for today are given by Ricky Becker in honor of the 28th wedding anniversary of Rick and Tracy Becker. The eternal light is lit by Debbie Morrow in memory of Mary LaBrie. And our prayers from Cindy Vesicchio to continue to pray for George, healing from cancer. From Corinne Leary in gratitude that Hurricane Delta did not hit Mexico any harder than it did. Pray for those still dealing with its aftermath. And pray for those still in its path. And pray for the first responders that they may be able to work quickly and safely. From Cheryl Boyce to pray for her family, friends, and her fur babies. From Michelle Stein for the family of Len Harding, the grandfather of Kelly Stein at his death, and for Gary Murphy, who was just diagnosed with cancer. From Joy Peterson to pray for Lynn Cindy Lou, praying that her doctors will help her to heal. From Susan Brady to pray for Russ, Kermit, and George under the doctor's care, and for all those with broken hearts, may they find comfort and strength. From the Fagan family at the death of Janine's uncle, the Reverend Bernard Engelhart, and from Amy Parisi for her friend Sean going through COVID. With that in mind, we continue with our prayers. It's windy. O oh Lord, our shepherd, we thank you for your promise to be with us. Even though we may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, grant us peace in knowing that you never leave nor forsake us. And Lord, our shepherd, you prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. And so we pray for our enemies. We pray that we all may have a change of heart and seek not to be vindictive, but to live together in peace. Bless our homes and our families, especially our children and teachers, that they may be safe during these challenging times. Fill our homes with your presence and peace. And Lord, our shepherd, we ask that you would be merciful to those who are suffering, especially those under the care of doctors, for George, Gary, Cindy Lou, Russ, Kermit, 
Sue's friend, George, and for Sean. And for those who mourn, the family of Len Harding and the family of the Reverend Bernard Engelhart, and all those with broken hearts, may they find comfort and strength. And for those with special needs, for Cheryl's family, friends, and her pets, and for those in the path of storms, we thank you for those who were spared, and we pray for those still dealing with its aftermath, those still in its path, and for the first responders, that they may be able to work quickly and safely. Where there is physical or mental illness, we ask that you would grant healing and restoration according to your gracious will. Grant to them your peace which passes all understanding. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. We conclude with a hymn, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is.
May God bless your day. Thank you.